Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Greensock to explain to you lag smoothing, which is a new method that lets you configure how the engine responds when CPU spikes are encountered. Before I get into the particulars though of how lag smoothing works, I want to show you exactly how the timing mechanism within GSAP currently works when we encounter lag. At Greensock, we believe that timing is king and that all tweens should be precisely synchronized across the platform at all times. Let me explain why this is so important. So I have a very simple demo set up that's going to move this green square across the screen at a constant rate. And after two seconds, it's going to be perfectly lined up with this orange square. And then both of them are gonna to move together at a rate of 200 pixels per second. So in a perfect world with perfect timing and no CPU junk going on, you'll see that when that green square meets the orange one, they're perfectly aligned, they move at the same rate, there's no gaps, there's no overlapping. That's perfect. Now, um, suppose that we inject 1,000 milliseconds or one second worth of lag at the beginning of this animation. Currently, GSAP, when it encounters that kind of lag, says, hey, you know what? I've lost one second of animation. I'm going to make my next render make sure that each of my tweens has advanced by one second. So what this results in sometimes is a jump. You'll notice that while I'm flashing that simulated lag warning here, that after that transpires, the green square jumps because the engine says, hey, that green square should have moved X amount of distance by now. So the downside of this is that, yes, you have that little bit of a jump, but the upside is that we're still respecting the start time of this orange square here, and they totally meet up perfectly aligned, even though we've lost one second of the green animation. So next I want to show you what happens when an engine doesn't respect timing. Here we're going to introduce the same amount of lag and you'll see now that instead of a jump, a lot of engines will just delay the start time of the green square. But what happens is that tweens that are scheduled to run later don't necessarily have their start times adjusted too. So things get totally out of whack. You'll see we have this huge space between the green box and the orange box because maybe the orange box is starting when it should but the green box had its start time offset. Now, this is a little bit of an extreme situation to make the issue clear, uh, but later on I'm going to show you how this really plays out in real world. So with our new lag smoothing method, we hope to give you guys lots of control how the engine responds when we encounter lag. The good news is we can now avoid that initial jump that we saw initially with the green box, but we can also offset the relative timing of all of our tweens. So let me show you what the end result of that is going to be. So we're going to introduce the same amount of lag, but you'll see that the green box delayed its start a bit, but it's still met up with the orange box at the exact same amount of time. So I think a lot of developers are really going to appreciate this sort of perceived performance gain or perceived smoothness. All right, so there may be a little bit of a lag at the beginning, but when the tweens start, they all maintain perfect synchronization. The lag smoothing method takes two parameters. The first one is the threshold, which is the amount of lag that we're going to be detecting. And the next amount is the adjusted lag parameter. So basically when we encounter some amount of lag, this is the amount of offset we're going to introduce. So basically if we, the engine realizes that there's been a thousand milliseconds between frame ticks, it's going to act as if only 20 milliseconds has transpired. Okay, so we can configure this method however we like. So now that we understand a bit about how GSAP respects timing, we're going to allow you to compare GSAP's timing methods with those of other engines. Right now we have a demo that has 2,000 boxes that are going to be animating with a very slight stagger between their start times. Uh, you can read this description here, play around with this demo, we'll give you the links. Uh, but for now I'm going to quickly show you that with 2,000 boxes using the new version of GSAP, I'm going to run this test and you're going to notice that while there's all these boxes are animating that you get these really nice and even slightly diagonal lines showing you that we're maintaining an equal offset between all the animations okay so every animation is just offset by just a slight 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 amount if I switch over to jQuery and run this test you're gonna see a bunch of clumping so here we're seeing that you know what, the relative timing isn't being respected for all of these different tweens. They're sort of being lumped together and it's really quite a mess. And at some point jQuery looks like it's kind of choking. Um, we're going to switch over to transit with the same amount of boxes 
and run that test and again you're going to see that clumping you're going to see brakes because again when these engines encounter a lag it's just the current tween that might have its timing offset whereas with gsap all of the tweens stay in perfect sync even when we encounter lag now i want to show you exactly how the new lag smoothing threshold and adjusted lag parameters work but the problem is with my current setup and the new version of gsap even with 6,000 boxes, um, I really don't encounter any lag at all. And you'll notice that for 6,000 boxes, we're still getting really smooth, staggered tweens. Um, and it's not really an issue. So what I'm going to do is go to our other test, which again, you'll have access to this as well. And I'm going to deselect the lazy property here, which is going to make GSAP act as the old version of GSAP. So we are going to have an initial lag. All right, I'm going to set the number of boxes to a thousand and I'm going to run this test and you'll see that we have about a thousand milliseconds or one second worth of lag, which means that the boxes are all going to jump for one second's worth of time, basically, when they start animating. So there's the jump that some people aren't very fond of. So we're going to enable lag smoothing and watch what happens now. When I run the test, yes, we're waiting for a little bit, but all those tweens then start at the same relative time and we get to see the entire animation and it all runs very smooth. So although there's a little bit of a wait up front, we get the really nice smooth animation. So you may be asking, well, why are you waiting for 500 milliseconds before you do any sort of lag adjustment? Why don't you just, you know, every 50 milliseconds, if there's any sort of lag, we'll move things over. Uh, this can be bad in extreme situations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put lazy back on so we don't have a huge initial lag with 4,000 boxes. But even if I'm tweening 4,000 boxes, I'm probably gonna go over that 50 millisecond threshold occasionally. So let's see what happens now if I run the test. All right, there's not a big delay up front, but you'll see that all these boxes are moving very, very slowly because what's happened is we're probably quite often going over a 50 millisecond threshold and then we're just adjusting by literally two frames of animation. So we're just keep making very, very little progress over a long amount of time. So we get these slow tweens, which is bad. So that's why we figured that, you know, maybe only in extreme situations where you're losing, you know, half a second to make that adjustment. So now you'll see that things run much nicer. There was a little bit of a delay up front. We made a slight adjustment and you get to see the whole animation of 4,000 boxes. So again, uh, we're gonna make these tests publicly available to you, try them out, test against different engines. Uh, in a nutshell, the fact that lazy is enabled by default, um, you should see really huge initialization performance gains if you're doing a lot of tweens that are starting at the same time or close to the same time. Um, and lag smoothing is going to allow you to, as the name implies, smooth out your lag and avoid some of those jumps if you don't like them. The good news is, is that timing will always be respected. So tweens will always start at the right time relative to each other, even if you experience a slight hiccup here or there. So try out 1.12.0, dump it into your projects and have fun.